Ladies and gentlemen, it's you, it's me, it's local love, it's echoplexmedia.com. If you're tuned in live, it's Twitch. And tonight we've got a great live guest in the studio tonight. You have definitely heard his voice before. If you've been a part of this show, of this network for a short or a long time, really, then you've definitely heard the voice of Mr. Walter Campbell. Mr. Walter Campbell, how are you tonight, man? I, I'm doing fantastic, Chip. Thank you very uh, much. Thank you, Local Love, for having me. I'm like Ringo Starr. I'm happy to be here. Man, we're happy to have you. Like, Okay, so for those of you who don't know, he's a huge part of this network. He's, he's the man of many names, and he's the voice in many bands, because, uh, and he's in, in his song Nice Guys is uh, featured on the opening episode of The Plex, which is our... Uh, Sunday show. It's our flagship show. It's been going at least 150 episodes by now. Um, but yeah, you're you're part of uh, you're part of that. You're part of uh, you're part of NVS. You've got your solo thing going on. Then there's Dicky Snake Dick. There's, uh, there's Dicky Snake Dick. There's then, there's the Snake Dick. Yeah. Uh, and the Snake Dick <laughs> I have brought back tonight oh, for okay. one night only. Uh, All right. <laughs> because Snake Dick a- actually is dead. He's um, whipping Snake it out Dick tonight, ladies and is gentlemen. Is deceased. Come back from the dead for tonight. <laughs> All um, right. Well, that's man. And then, uh, let's see, I, I know I'm forgetting one. Oh, Book on VHS. Book on VHS. Book Thank on you. VHS. Yes. yes. So this is great. I love, because I always love asking uh, musicians questions, but but it's even more fun when now I've got so many different artistic fields to kind of just dip into and pick and choose and have, have some fun. So uh, how are you doing tonight, man? 
I, I am doing fantastic. I had a, uh, uh, so this is actually admittedly usually pretty close to my bedtime because I'm up at zero in the o'clock in the morning. Um, so I had a, a coffee when I got down here at a really nice place called I think the Seven Leaves or something like that. Oh, okay. Um, they sell coffee, by the way, not other things. Um, and that, that was, that was great. And I'm, I'm just, I'm amped up. I'm happy to be here in this, uh, very uh, reddish room. Um, and uh yeah i'm I'm feeling good i'm pumped awesome I'm pumped. We, yeah. well we, I, I think uh part of the part of the the idea behind the lighting too especially when we have artists in here if we're gonna get a live performance out of you we want you to kind of feel like you might be in a bar you know we got kind of that that divey feel and and we hope it uh helps with with the artist's energy <laughs> Um, I want to add, I'm, I'm really happy to have uh, some folks here that I haven't seen for a while as well. Um, really great to have uh, River of NVS here. Um, hey. uh... <laughs> <laughs> if you go back a few episodes, actually, uh, we did a really good uh, interview with River and he did some really awesome uh, performances right here in the studio as well. So if you're listening live, any single podcatcher that you could find, anywhere that you would listen to a podcast, just type in local love. I almost guarantee you that we're going to pop up first. Uh, you can do it to Spotify, Apple, I don't know, Google. There's there's a lot of ways to look up the podcast, look at previous episodes. They're a whole lot of fun. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, you and River were, were in NVS together. We are we, we are still in NVS. All right. um, NVS is not quite as active as, as we were uh, in, in years past, but uh, we still try to play at least one show um, a year or so. Um, I'm sure we're going to have a show later this year, probably at the Caravan. Spoiler alert. Um, so stay tuned. I'm sure we'll have more information about that coming. Um, but I'm also here to ta talk about a couple other projects. Um, Snake Dick Necromancy is right, Keegan. Um... Uh, so let me let me talk a little bit about if if if, if you don't mind I'm gonna I'm oh, just gonna give yeah. you a lowdown about the three projects that I'm uh, working on beyond NVS. So around what was it 2014 I started book on VHS as a, a solo recording project, really influenced by bands like uh, Naja and Jezu, really going for kind of like that like really like slow just just. Uh, kind of like a lo-fi. There was a definite video game aesthetic with it too. Okay, I like that. I, I was I channeling. That. Yeah, you ever play like like old Sierra games Hell or yeah. like you know like Rise of the Dragon, Willy Beamish, or the Dynamix, and then like you know old NES and SNES games. Um, I'm really really into survival horror games, and so that aesthetic uh, or that that sort of stuff really influences a lot of my sort of solo stuff. But anyway, book on VHS. Uh, started around 2014. Um, in 2016, Carl Meishen of the band The Greening, which you should check out. They're a San Francisco band. Really awesome. They do, uh, quote-unquote, collage rock. Mm -hmm. um, check out The Greening, um, as well as Panhandlers Union, as well as NVS. Uh, I think you could find them all on Bandcamp, so um, uh, we'll talk more about Bandcamp in a little oh, bit. Oh, definitely. Um, Carl joined Book on VHS in 2016, um, and um, and we haven't looked back. We've got a new album coming out in April. It's called Thoughts and Prayers. Really excited about that one. That'll be coming out. Um, and uh, yeah, sorry. I'm just, I feel like I'm just rambling, Chip. Like, no, I, 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 I'll, um, I'll, I'll wrangle you up okay, in just yeah, a bit. But, wrangle me, like but, like you know, reel me in as as, as needed. Um, so so like definitely, you said uh, that this is usually your bedtime, uh, but you are a part of many different projects. Like what is what is the Bruce Wayne to your Batman? What's what what funds the music? What funds the music? Yeah, like oh, what's your uh, what's your what's your what's your like secret identity as a as a working? Uh, I, uh, <laughs> I'm an administrative officer <laughs> at a at a at a local university. So I, I work for um I work for a university um, nice. um in an administrative capacity, and uh, that is what pays the bills. I enjoy it. I love my coworkers. I love what I'm doing. Before that, I worked for a nonprofit, um, which I also volunteered for for a long time, uh, called the Shanti Project. Uh, cool. I recommend checking them out. They're great. Donate to them. They're fantastic. Shanti and SF. Um, and then before that, I did retail for many, many years. Worked at a, a, a Pete's and other coffee and other retail places. And right that's on. why my sleep schedule is a little mucked up. Oh, I get you. Uh, I definitely get that. Um, <laughs> But that, yeah, that's what that's what help pay, helps pay the bills, and then any income that I receive from um, from music. I mean that that goes just all back to, right to back other musicians. Music. Um, I definitely uh, do not, as just about I'm sure every single musician who has ever set foot in here. Well, I can't say all of them, but you know we don't make a profit off this. We do it for the love. We do it because we're we're passionate and we want to support other artists. And and 
I love music. Yeah. I love music. So yeah, um, I'm well. Definitely shows. I mean, you've been uh, you've been a long time contributor uh, since this project was first getting off the ground. Uh, definitely long time contributor. Uh, like always sending us music. Uh, it's it's been cool too because like we've seen definitely a growth in in the different like as as you keep sending us stuff, we we see like different things or we notice different things, and we're gonna get into all of that tonight. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start us off. With uh, usually I'll ask the artist to like pick their first song to share, but I'm gonna start us off with "Nice Guys." So for anybody that hasn't heard this song before, this is the theme song to our Sunday show. Uh, check out all the shows on EchoplexMedia.com. Uh, everything that you need to know is there. Plus, we have a 24-hour stream of all the music that's been submitted to our library, which is over 1,500 songs. We've got a 24-hour stream of music. It's free. You can go ahead and search through the artists. Uh, you can find your new favorite artists and figure more ways out to find them. But right now, this is Nice Guys by NVS off of their album, Make America NVS Again. Stay tuned. We got a lot more local love for you coming right up. This one's called Nice Guys. It's on our album, Save California. You can find it at nvsmusic.com. This world is as full of kindness and ethical politeness. To be the Jews, my sarcastic tone. I'm a bit underwhelmed by the sample shown. <laughs> Mr. Piss Trump, fraternity guy. If you can an asshole with bloodshot eyes. Get drunk and fight every night Idolize Bradley for little women's rights Hover from a crisis and don't give a fucking hey Do you think you could drive a bigger truck? So wave your baseball cap to the side Let everyone know that you're a nice guy So damn cool, we're so impressed Lots of chicks and a barrel chest Cause you're a real man Punch more putts, gonna piss in your face While you're past out drunk I'm a nice guy, you're a nice guy She's a nice guy, oh We're NVS, nvsmusic.com. Just, yeah, fuck that. 
<laughs> so Stay where was? A I need to feel a little bit more comfortable. I hope you guys don't mind. <laughs> we'll get comfortable. That that was nice guys by NVS. We got the man right here, Mr. Walter Campbell. I was over at uh, Art Boutique oh, uh, back in 2015. It was actually a birthday show for me. It was, right. That was a lot of fun. That was That's... a really fun show. I think it was a Ruffy CD release, EP release okay. for Don't Hate the Cops. Yeah. I think. All right. Yeah. Sounds yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> great, great EP, by the way. Listen to the Ruffies. Right on. We'll, uh, we'll definitely play some more of them tonight as well. <laughs> Uh, so, kind of take us through the timeline. I know, yes. I know that the the initial the initial project was was books on VHS, and you started that around like 2014. Yes. So, uh, uh, what's like the order that everything came in after that? So, in the beginning, there was NVS, and NVS started in uh, in the beginning. Wait, let's say that slower and more. In the beginning, <laughs> in the beginning, there was NVS. There was NVS. <laughs> NVS uh, began in 1999 with uh, Trey and I. Um, and um, fast forward a number of years, and you know, uh, we played a lot of shows in San Jose, and we're NVS, and, and people know who NVS is. If you don't know who NVS is for any reason, check out NVS Music at Band, sorry, nvsmusic.bandcamp.com, uh, and you can learn all about NVS. Um, <laughs> so, book on VHS started in 2014. Uh, so, Dicky Snake Dick, the name Dicky Snake Dick, is based on an idea. Um, and my my recollection might be a little hazy on this, but who cares? I'm just making it up as I go. <laughs> um, so Richard Snake Dick and the Snake Dicks was a project led by Jamie Stewart, uh, uh, better known uh, of the band Shushu, um, okay. who used to play in a local uh, San Jose band called Ibopa. And uh, D uh, sorry, Richard Snake Dick and the Snake Dicks was a cover band. I never saw them play, so I can't, you know. But I, I know some folks who played uh in this project and if i'm r recalling correctly uh micah at one point played in this project or at least was familiar with this project anyway um and micah is the drummer of nvs for those who, yeah. who don't know um a long time friend of mine love micah micah hello uh i hope you're having a wonderful family obligation practice tonight uh <laughs> with kyle uh, i'll see you guys later um <laughs> and um yeah so uh the the idea around Richard Snake Dick was like it, it, it was really intended to be this kind of like tongue in cheek like you know Jamie would like ham it up with like his uh you know what he was like wearing like really tight or like cut off jeans from from what I recall or what I what, what I've heard you know prancing around the type of shit that I you know I would definitely pull with Negative Star which was the band that Mike and I were in when I was in high school mm -hmm. um and a little bit of what I would do with NVS because if anyone's ever been to an NVS show they know two things one I get really sweaty. And two, I often end up with um, not that much clothes on, um, <laughs> at least on my end. I mean, that, that's that's uh, literally. And uh, there's a lot more interesting stuff that's going on with NVS aside from <laughs> uh, aside from my strip show. But um, it's uh, just a fringe so, benefit of the whole of the whole experience. Yeah, exa exactly. You know, yeah. it's like you don't even have to go to an NVS show. You just just <laughs> um, just pick. Yeah. Anyway, picture me sweaty and naked, and then you've been to an NVS show. Um, and then just take a cold shower. Um, but uh, Dicky Snake Dick was sort of uh, so. Jamie moved on, you know, to other things, um, uh, you know, with Shushu and, and, and all that. Um, and uh, at, at one point there was, uh, I don't know if an idea, a seed was planted about me assuming the role of Richard Snake Dick's uh, younger brother. And I, I don't think there, there was, there was talk around this, but like, you know, nothing ever really happened. So like me being a, a related to Richard, but being like his, you know, younger crazier brother or cousin or nephew or what have you um and the idea would be then you know we would do like cheesy rock and roll covers like acdc mm -hmm. you know my crew stuff like that uh, uh under the name dicky snake dick and the snake dicks so that never happened um i took an experimental music class online with jamie uh back in 2021 and that really inspired me um because i've always loved electronic experimental you know kind of other other types of music that you know NVS will like kind of touch upon, but you know as as a as a um, as a singer for NVS, you know I didn't um, you know instrumentation was not really my thing with that band. You know um, I always loved synths and things like that. You know um, and I always wanted to kind of like dabble with it and just kind of you know fool around with it. And I'm also a bit of a homebody, so you know I you know what ended up being perfect was uh learning about you know how to use this uh you know these daws to or daws is mm -hmm. that you, you say daws right yeah, that's, that's the thing not dos but dos oh, yeah, right? yeah yeah dos like jaws and then pause yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah okay uh dos um 
Um, but yeah, um, and um, you know, just kind of fooling around, making sounds. Uh, I I love field recordings. I love you know just experimentation. I love you know just you know I, I'm all into the lo-fi aesthetic. So I have I have no problem, no qualms, just like, you know pulling out my phone and just recording random stuff. And seeing what I come up with, you know, put a put a couple, you know, use a couple plugins, put a couple filters, just dabble and see and see what 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 happens. And yeah. um, I should say too, with a lot of the solo stuff that I've been doing, the um, the approach I've had with with the music has been very more. It's been more spontaneous, mm -hmm. so it's been less rehearsed. Um, in the living situation I am in now, I mean, with NVS, you know, I would practice once a week with the band. I'm, you know, now just kind of practicing at home um you know uh it, it's it's not as conducive for like sort of regular you know routine uh uh practice in the way that i was used to with the band but it's perfect for you know fucking around at home you know it doesn't matter what time four in the morning you know did, did pull out uh, the microphone just did, dabble and record did the pandemic kind of come into play with kind of starting off a solo project well, would you say i mean a lot of a lot of artists that we talk to usually ended up picking up new skills. Some of them like learned just like different ways to market themselves, or maybe even like video, or you know, some people just became masters of the home recording. Like, uh, would you say that this was kind of a project from like not getting to socialize as much, or were you already kind of a homebody before then? I would say I definitely feel like the pandemic made me more of a um of a homebody. Uh, I, I I was already just kind of a little bit of you know, a little, little introverted, a little bit reclusive. Um, and I think the, the pandemic really put me, you know, just really, uh, made me a lot more kind of withdrawn. Um, yeah. you know, for a while I was just kind of scared about going out and, uh, you know, I, I think I even wrote a couple, uh, uh, songs about that. And, uh, some of, some of the solo stuff, I forget what it's called, but it's, there's one song that's basically called like "I'm Afraid to Go Outside" or something like that. I can't remember oh, wow. what it's called. It's off my uh, album, "Call Me Snake Dick," uh, the Dicky Snake Dick album. Um, and yeah, it was just a weird time, really weird time. Um, I had already kind of pulled away from the San Jose music scene a bit because mm -hmm. I had moved to, um, you know, I'd moved to San Francisco and then I eventually moved to uh, Berkeley and then now I live in uh, Richmond. And um, I've just been less involved. You yeah. know, and MVS is playing less. Um, I've been more detached from kind of what what bands and and what you know. People San Jose is detached here. from its own music scene. <laughs> I, mean, the, I mean, and then there's that too, <laughs> yeah. where you know it, it's there. There's that whole thing where it's like, well, yeah. what what is the San Jose music scene? I don't I don't want to like you know I don't I don't want to downplay the the awesome stuff that that oh, bands yeah. are doing here. Stuff, I mean, the Ruffies just played a show not that long ago. Periscope is going strong. Sweet Haya, uh, Monkey. Yeah. I mean, God, yeah, you know, Monkey's still touring the Monkey. world. <laughs> yeah, no, they're 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 they've been incredible. Um, yeah. so they're. There are a lot of really awesome bands around here. Panhandlers Union, um, just good shit, good shit to check yeah. out. Um, and um, and I just lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, hey, I've got uh, you had mentioned the album "Call Me Snake Dick." I've got three different songs off that album. I got "Texas." Now that's what I call rock and roll music, where my friends are going to be there too. Which one uh, would you recommend? Let's go we... with Let's go with Texas. I'm feeling a little little. Uh, Texas right All now. right, get your boots on. Texas. Find those big old hats. This song is called Texas by Dickie Snake Dick. Yeah. <laughs> Texas really is a well-governed state. The most precious freedom of all is life itself. If people look at the facts, our creator and with the right to life. If, if people look at the facts, Texas really is a well-governed state. Our creator endowed us with the right to life. If, if people look at the facts, the most precious freedom of all is life itself. look at the facts. Texas really is a well-governed state. If people look at the facts, Texas really is a well-governed state. Texas really is a 
well-governed state. Texas will continue to foster a culture of life. Texas really is a well-governed state. If people look at the facts, millions of children lose their lives every year before they are even born. Our creator, Texas, will continue to foster a culture of life. Our creator, if people look at the facts, Texas really is a well-governed state. That was Texas. Oh, but, Texas. Oh, Texas. <laughs> All right. You're going to have to uh, tell us a California little bias, about this. A serious California bias. <laughs> anyway. It's okay. We're, we're, we're okay with that here. So, uh, I mean, California's got its issues, too. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, a little backstory. Give us a little backstory on that song. Yes. Uh, well, the backstory on that song... Um, I mean, Greg Abbott provides uh, some, uh, some backing vocals. <laughs> and, so, so confident. Uh, what's that said again? <laughs> he's, he's so confident. He is, uh, he is someone to really watch out for, isn't he? Um, yeah, scary scary to think who's going to be running for president in a couple of years. But anyway. Um, different, so, show. But, uh, different show. Different show. Yeah, different show. Different show. Different show. Uh, which you should turn into as well on Echo Plus Media. Um, right in the mic. Oh yes, yes, yes. Um, hello, hello, hello. There you there. go. Much um, so I did. I did want to take an opportunity to uh, talk about um, a release that I have on a label called uh, No Part of It, uh, No Part of It Records. You can find them on Bandcamp. Um, so you were talking about during the pandemic in terms of like you know community, and one of the things that has been a huge uh, source of community for me, I think, uh, has been Bandcamp, and you know. Artists have come in here and they've they've raved about Bandcamp about how much they love that platform. Mm -hmm. I think what's really awesome, and I'm sure other people have mentioned this, is I mean it's it's really community centered in the sense that you can make a purchase and yeah. you you know your that purchase ends up showing up on your whatever your your profile your little your you know you got your icon and you've got your purchase history and people mm -hmm. can go then see what you've purchased and I have made. A number of connections that way with different people and um i found artists that way and i've actually built connections and and uh, relationships with people that i've really had the privilege to meet through Bandcamp. and um one of those folks uh is a, a individual by the name of arvo zylo i'm hoping i'm pronouncing arvo's name correctly um but he runs a, a label called no part of it and um really great artists on there you should check out blood rhythms uh, Leslie Keffer is a really celebrated and really awesome artist who does a lot of really cool experimental stuff with radios. Um, she's got a number of releases on there. Um, a great new release from a band called Wilt. Just really cool experimental kind of ambient, dark ambient, you know, all, all, all sorts of interesting stuff. Yeah. Um, and um, I've got a release on there called Walter Ego, which was, uh, it's a curated mix of stuff that I did under the name Dickie Snake Dick that Arvo ended up, um, you know, 
um, curating and 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 um, uh, coming up with a a, um, a compilation, a really good compilation of mm-hmm. stuff. And um, yeah, I just want to recommend everyone to check that out. You could find that at no part of it on Bandcamp. So that's no part of it dot Bandcamp dot uh, com, I believe. Um, and then the name of the album is Walter Ego. Um, so I just wanted to give a little shout out to that uh, mm-hmm. uh, that one. And then the other. Uh, folks, I wanted to just give a shout out to, I don't know if you see this HR pin, uh, that stands for Humanhood Recordings, another great label that I've gotten, um, uh, become acquainted with, uh, um, individual by the name of, uh, Nathaniel Ian Lee, who does amazing, really cool experimental stuff as well. Uh, a lot of ambient stuff, a lot of noise oriented stuff. Um, and, uh, Humanhood Recordings is just a phenomenal label. I can't, I can't, uh, stress enough. So check out Nathaniel, check out Humanhood Recordings. Um, and Thaniel also does commission work. He designed the new uh, book on VHS album uh, okay. cover for Thoughts and Prayers, which is coming out in April. Um, I should add that under my solo project, uh, Walter Campbell, which is at waltercampbell.bandcamp.com, mm-hmm. um, I'm going to have um, a new album out, I want to say this summer, uh, that I'm working on right now. I'm really excited about It's kind of a dungeon synth pop record because huh. uh, I love pop music all right um i i would often listen to madonna's immaculate collection on repeat before <laughs> cool. like nbs shows um and right right before tonight i was listening to like naked eyes and um uh whatchamacallit um oh god what's the name of that band not wall of voodoo um i like wall of voodoo as well but that's not the band i was listening to i like pop music well I that's actually one music. of the questions i usually like to ask people yeah, yeah. is what's like what's maybe something that's that's in your in your like in the music that you listen to Mm-hmm. What's something that would maybe surprise people if they were like pretty familiar with your, with your collection? Like you've um, already said, like you know Madonna, which is which is I don't know I I I, I get it just because like I listen to all sorts of music, so I can definitely get it, especially with how uh, like melodically experimental I guess she was kind of mm-hmm. like with different uh, sounds, chord structures, stuff. like even like tempos sometimes. Uh, so and and like listening to a lot of your stuff, I can kind of say like. You've got your styles are all over the map, which is really cool. Like you're not in any one specific corner. You're kind of you're painting all over the room, you know. Thank you. So, uh, like, what would be somebody or an artist or a band that people would be really surprised to hear that you listen to, if you're willing to share? <laughs> um, yeah, definitely. Oh, that's that's a great question. I'm trying to think of. Well, okay, so the first artist I ever was really into, and I mean, I, I don't know, maybe people would would see this with me but so there's a there's a latin central america well i, I believe she's from brazil um a brazilian uh um performer by the name of shusha uh xuxa mm-hmm. and uh she does uh pop she had like a child show she, she's huge she she's like um i'm trying to think of an equivalent um anyway look up shusha she, she's she's she was like enormous during the 80s and the 90s uh kind of a similar trajectory in some ways as madonna but i think you know in a way she was even larger than mm. than like, more popular especially in latin central america uh i used to watch her you know um uh when i was in brazil um you know the the little time that i spent over there because my mom was uh, is from there so um growing up the time that i would visit you know i remember watching shusha and she had like this whole i can't even describe it I'm, uh, but like this like these costumes and like you know it was like a it, it was like a, a kid show so she had like kids performing anyway I, I fucking love Shusha. I, I, will, I will listen to Shusha, um, you know, all day. I, I have a couple of her albums. Um, I've, I've lost the tapes because I had those when I was a kid. And they're kind of hard to, to come by, um, as far as I can tell. But you could stream it, you know, I find it. So Would you say that that, like, sort of thing, growing up watching something like that had an influence at all on how you play a show or, like, the element, like, el- elements from that? Like, Absolutely. What would you Absolutely. say? Who, who would you say maybe motivated you to be like, all right, I want my stage show to look like this. I want people to experience my music in this way. Like maybe who uh So two two artists come to mind. So I I, I like I like incorporating a sense of humor. Even in some of the more serious stuff I try to do. Mm-hmm. Like for example, I have um I've kind of a noise album. It's a bit of a tribute to um uh to the movie The Thing, as well as the the book that the thing is uh, based on, Who mm-hmm. Goes There? And it's the album's called Who Goes There. So there's not really a lot of humor in that, for example, but um, I try to incorporate humor in pretty much everything I do. And a lot of that comes from um, um, Andy Kaufman. Uh, I definitely get, take a lot of I can see that. Him. Like looking into, like knowing, being familiar with some of your music, I could definitely kind of see that. There, there is a, <laughs> so I'm a, I'm a people pleaser, like try, like 
through and through where like, you know, so Annie Kaufman would really try to make people feel uncomfortable in a way that honestly, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know if I really want to make people feel like uncomfortable in that same way, but yeah. there's, I like that because it challenges people's cons like sort of ideas or expectations of, of, I, I think that was one of the most brilliant things about Andy Kaufman is that you didn't know what to expect. Yeah. And, 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 and you didn't know when it was, what was real and what wasn't. And another, um, kind of similar artists that I would throw out there uh, is a band called Negative Land. Are you familiar with Negative Land? No. So Negative Land, they're like, they are, uh, it, it, they're, they also have Bay Area uh, roots. Uh, so Negative Land is N, negative, like N-E-G-A-T-I-V-L-A-N-D. Uh, they just released actually a new, a new record. So one of the records that they're best known for is releasing an album called U2, okay. um, which the cover of the record says U2 in huge letters. And then in very small letters, it says Negative Land. And it's got like a U2 bomber on there. <laughs> and they got sued by Allen Records. And they got like so much shit. Uh, one, because that was around the time that U2, I think, released the album Pop. And so okay. it was meant to like totally like, you know, just... Oh, man. Just lampoon, I mean, you know, just... just just I, I love shenanigans like that. It went that. viral before viral was a thing, yeah, I guess, yeah. technically. I mean, especially with so many people probably just being like, oh, the new E2 album, let's go get it. And <laughs> people are buying like, it. They're like, what the fuck? And so what was great about that record, brilliant. They, they took samples of Casey Kasem, like, off. I'm off, Casey Kasem. It, no, it's totally it, it, it was like yeah, him yeah. going off because it was like someone recorded him. Uh, I mean, and this is kind of unfair. Like, we all have these off-script moments, but, like, mm -hmm. him losing his temper oh, I like, love when that recording I, I scratch with it as a DJ. <laughs> yeah. I, like, what no, the fuck is this? You know, no, he, and, yeah, and he's, he's, like, saying something like, I'm not talking about a dead dog dying. And it's like, you know, just, like, not what you'd expect. I'm yeah. Casey okay, Casey. You know, he's like, Shaggy, no. Um, but it was just, it's hilarious. <laughs> uh, and they got so much shit for that. And I love <laughs> Negative Land so much for that. So I, I love, like, Plunder Phonics. I love, like, just, like, I love just, just, um, like I love jokes like that. I mm -hmm. love like like the just 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 you know kind of um, forgetting the the term right now. Mm -hmm. I like to make people laugh. Oh, you like entertaining, <laughs> but I like to make people feel uncomfortable too. Well, let's take it even back further. Like, what was maybe like a specific moment in your life? Because you said you were in bands in high school and stuff like that. What's maybe a specific moment in your life that made you think like, damn, I really want to pursue music. Like, is there, was there like a specific moment that comes to mind or when did you start, when did you first pick up an instrument? Start singing or anything like that? Oh gosh. Well, I started singing, I, I think I sang for choir. Okay. I think, I, I don't remember why. And then I realized I had a decent voice, at least compared to some of my classmates. Uh, that's kind of how I, I discovered that in, in Catholic school. I discover a lot of things in Catholic school. Um, <laughs> you folks know what I'm talking about. In Catholic school. They all know. Anyway, um, <laughs> and um, first instrument I ever picked up. I know I was really. I've always like when I was young, like young, young, um, four or five. You know, I would, I would pots and pans. You know, I'd like kind of play around with that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I I don't play drums or percussion, but I've always kind of been drawn to to unconventional sort of items to use as sort of you know. Uh, in, for instrumentation, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, I've never, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm, unlike many other very talented musicians in the area, um, I'm not uh, formally trained in any way, you know, and actually, you know, with with singing too, I, I'm, you know, I don't really have a lot of formal training. It's just, you know, kind of going off um, my natural graces. Um, and, you know, I dabble with, with, with bass and I dabble with synth now, um, but um, that stuff kind of came a little bit later. I, I, I played bass a bit i think in the, my 20s but not like you know I, I never played for a band or anything i just you'd you know. mentioned uh, a band that you were in in high school that you and mm -hmm. micah were a part of yeah, what, yeah. Uh, what was your role in that band so i, I sang for that band okay um and uh we were called negative star uh okay. so shout out to anyone out there who ever, remembers who negative did you guys star ever play is. the gaslighter no we never played the gas we played the cactus club twice okay cool um we played the edge uh, i unfortunately could not make that show um, and we played, uh, not the chemical free zone. What was it called? Oh shit. I forgot about the chem free zone. It was, it was, <laughs> no, it was, um, it was like some, we got banned from all like public high school shows or something like that after our first show. <laughs> and it wasn't even like that. We, we, we did that much. I think I ripped some tights and that, I, I don't know. I, I rubbed some people the wrong way. <laughs> um, but I was a total man tonight back then. So um negative star is is a bit of a joke 
uh, in the sense that, um, uh, and I actually feel kind of. Anyway, we don't need to get. I, I actually have a song I'll be performing later. Um, you know, it touches upon my feelings uh, toward Marilyn Manson. Uh, oh. but, well, hey, if you had to pick a song that you that you've given us that's in our library hmm. uh, from yeah, any yeah. of your projects, like what's the one that you would maybe want to share? with with the people we maybe got some new listeners we got Definitely. you know some people what's one that's like maybe real special to you or one that you would really like to share with people right now i i would love to so i am i was talking about that new dungeon synth pop album i'm working on um, a uh, new dungeon synth pop album i'm working on and um i've got a song um uh called drawn and quartered which i would love to uh, uh share with the uh uh, uh the internet um, gotcha. out there everyone awesome well this is drawn and quartered it's uh, and this is off of your your self titled project. Uh, yes. Yeah, so is, this is on, this is Walter Campbell, uh, which you can find waltercampbell.bandcamp.com. This is a demo of a song. Um, uh, this will be on an album that should be released in June or July. It's an album that's going to be called Corporal uh, Crawlers, and the song's called Drawn and Quartered. Awesome. Well, this is Drawn and Quartered by our in studio guest tonight, Walter Campbell. Stay tuned to Local Love. When we come back, we're going to be having a live in studio performance. So share the stream, and if you're listening on the podcast, just hit that little button, text it to somebody. Don't even explain it. Just text them on the podcast, and let's all hope they listen. This is Drawn and Quartered by Walter Campbell. We'll be right back.
But there's no one to hide from the body in the bucket I'm not proud of the legacy behind that I made it Cause we reigned through the terror of the rest Union came in by the records We're we'll lost with the last generation So I think that I'm safe Before that, we had Everywhere's an Island by the Ruffies. And right now, we are about to have a live in-studio performance by the Bay Area's own Mr. Walter Campbell. You ready to go? I believe I am. All um, right. All right. So Wait, I'm let's get loud little... for Walter Campbell, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to be doing some material from a Dickie Snake Dick EP called Farces of Death. There's also one song from a Dickie Snake Dick EP called Meat Drips. Uh, you could hear the original versions on dickysnakedick.bandcamp.com, but uh, this is the first time I'm doing any solo shit uh, by myself uh, without NVS and other bands, so let's, let's see how it goes. This first song's called No Love Lost.
Thank you. That's no love one, no love lost. How, uh, 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 levels okay? This thing, some, some, some. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this next one's. Where's what's that? No, everything. Everything. Dave did a phenomenal job. Everyone. I hope. I want, want you to know. Um, This next song's called My Dog Ate My Third Annual Report by Dickie Snake Dick, a.k.a. Walter Campbell. One, two, three, and four. My dog ate my annual report. Now there's throbbing gristle in my hand. Come with me and you'll understand just where I'm at, cause Dickie's back. Little Wick got panic attack with my musical lack that's full of crack, snap, crackle, pop. Cause the noise won't stop and the mic won't drop, cause Dickie ain't done. Get off your ass and fuck your guns, cause after this set I'll go back to my grave. But in the meantime, enjoy the dark wave. It's not a blue wave, it's not a red wave. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like a crash test dummy with a nose that's runny. Second verse. Dickie's back. There's more. One last snack. A dick chunk of your face. And then I'll eat toothpaste. Just to keep it fresh Oh, we're all mounds of flesh And I'm a serpent Resurrect, I resurrect I resurrect y'all mm -hmm. Come on with that Axl Rose solo Take it a flex with full effect Give it a flex Like Colin Kaepernick I am the anaconda of rock and roll music. I am the anaconda of rock and roll music. Rock and roll music. Rock and roll music. Rock and roll music. Thank you. Um, that one in its uh, instrumental form is off the EP Meat Drips. Um, but that was a special version done just for local love tonight. Uh, all these are special versions done just for local love. Um, th this next song, so I talked about Marilyn Manson, who I feel a great betrayal as someone who used to be a huge fan. I can't listen to their music anymore. Um, this song's um, about that. So I stand with Amber Heard, and, and, and I stand with women. Um, this one's called uh, Shut Up and Don't Play Your Guitar. So a little bit of a Frank Zappa uh, reference in this one, too. Crits, a thing of shit. Back that 
Set on fire Pass it off Pass that tire Urinates That's a fact So so have your cake Up your ass Here is my Cereal hat (laughs) What the fuck Up with that You look broke You go broke Right upside down. Shut up and don't play your guitar. Shut up and don't play your guitar. Shut up and don't play your guitar. Thank you. This is an intimate concert. Thank you. Thank you for being here and bearing witness. And being my my compassionate witnesses. I think I'm understanding technology. This one's called Be In My Video Nasty by Dickie Snake Dick, a.k.a. Walter Campbell. It's a madhouse, a nation under possession Mm, Don't go in the comment section Voting rights dead and buried Unhinged laws and politician Never been a better time to be a mortician Beyond the beyond, a country fractionated Hospitals filled with bodies of the unvaccinated Delusional from a death trap, pseudoscience and madness They're spitting on each other's graves, I feel nothing but sadness I said, I need some kind of relief, some sort of distraction That's bleaker than reality or partisan in action Got a webcam, a bucket of blood and subtraction Make them stream slowly to really get the reaction mm, I'm gonna make them stream slowly to really get the reaction I'm gonna make them stream slowly to really get the reaction video nasty Bless you Video nasty. Uh, nasty. Be, be in my video nasty. Be in my video nasty.
be a VHS player. Be a penetrator. I wanna be a VHS player. I wanna be a penetrator. I wanna be a VHS player. I wanna be a VHS player. I want to be. Video nasty. Won't you be? Won't you be in my video nasty? Thank you. Thank you very much. Got a couple more. Um, this next song's called Dead Again. And again, thank you all uh, for, for being here and checking this out. Um, I wanna I just, I wanna say that the uh, Bandcamp Friday is this Friday. So uh, I strongly encourage, not just me, if you're not into supporting me for any reason, um, you know, that's all good. There are, other, there are other musicians that you can support on Bandcamp Friday, uh, which is this Friday. Exactly, like Patty Kay of the Ruffies, uh, or Mr. River, who was here with Panhandlers Union earlier today. Um, uh, 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 exactly, Juan Maserati. You've got a touch. Sorry, I am fucking feeling so self-conscious right now. I keep wanting to say Naravis, and I know that's not your band. Oh, okay. Thank you, thank you. I'm having a moment. I'm having a senior moment. I'm getting like all all the local band names mixed up in my head, and I'm feeling like an asshole because I love Rebels Camp. I love Rebels Camp. I'm not even saying I'm not even saying that just to say that. I love Rebels Camp. And I can't tell you one how self-conscious I was feeling just like like watching you and thinking, oh my God, what's the name of that band? I can't think of the name of that band. You're, I think people people know how that feels. Like, what's the name of that fucking band? Or, or like you're like, what's the name of that fucking person in front of me right now? I can't think of their name. Okay, I'm gonna introduce them to someone else, or they're not gonna use their name. All right, what am I gonna do? Okay, we're gonna play a couple more songs. <laughs> This one's called Dead Again. I've just come back from the grave After being buried alive and now I'm in San Jose Seems like a good place to die I must be looking for love And I'm in just the right place So thank you for listening Before I'm back in the grave Let's go back to my place I've got a VHS Please let me eat your face Just the sweetest taste Shoot the nose off your face Now you scream in my face <laughs> I feel like a disgrace I guess it's back to the grave And now my grave's been defaced 
Dickie's dead again. It's okay, I want to get cremated anyway. Dickie's dead again. <laughs> I earned it. Dickie's dead again. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. All right, I, uh, so we know that you've heard Nice Guys, but we're going to give you a different flavor of Nice Guys. This is a little special treat. Uh, this is dedicated to Ashley uh, uh, upon request, uh, and, and this is, uh, I think some of you might might enjoy this, uh, or not, but either way, here we go. This one's called Nice Guys by Dickie Snake Dick, a.k.a. Walter Campbell. You can sing along if you know the words. I'm talking to the people at home as well. Let's sing together. So many nice people in this world. So full of kindness and ethical blindness. So please excuse my sarcastic tone. I'm a blitz underwhelmed by the sample.
a barrel chest. <laughs> you nice guy. We're all nice guys. Nice guy. WalterCampbell.BatCamp.com <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Local Love. Thank yep. you, Dave. Thank you, Chip. Thank you all. Thank you, Juan. Thank you, Patty. Thank you. What's your name again? Sorry. Alex. Thank you, Alex. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. Um, please support musicians. Period. <laughs> but but if, uh, if you use Bandcamp, please consider supporting musicians. This Friday, Bandcamp is waiving its fees. Um, so any music, uh, any money that goes to our bands this Friday on Bandcamp Friday, 100% of the earnings are going to go to bands. So my stuff is almost exclusively on Bandcamp. I encourage you to support me. If you don't want to support me, please support other artists uh, that you that you wish to support. And thank you again, everyone. That's awesome, man. Well, that was our in-studio guest, Walter Campbell. We'll have him up here with us in just a minute. One more time, Peanut Gallery. <laughs> Thank you for real. Thank you for, for everyone who tuned in. That was that was great. I'm going to go ahead and play American Tune by Panhandlers Union. And when we get back, we are going to be talking to our guest, Walter Campbell, some more. Thanks for tuning in. This is Local Love. Share the stream. I'm white and I've got everything I need. No one clutches their purses when they're in a room alone with me. And I can try any neighborhood I please At any hour And the police don't do a thing So if I see a penny on the ground I leave it alone and fucking flip it I'm a straight white male in America I got everything I need I'm a guy getting paid more than a girl with a degree and I can walk down the streets after the dark, no one wants to rape me And I can get a girl pregnant, and just as easily flee Just like my straight white male dad did to me So if I see a penny on the ground, I leave it alone and fucking flip it I'm a straight white male in America I've got all the luck I need Got a pile of broken mirrors and I'm walking on the ladders and I'm spilling tons of salt But to me that doesn't matter cause my skin and my gender and my orientation Are the best things to have if you live in this nation I recommend it highly So if I see a penny on the ground I leave it alone and fucking flip it I'm a straight white male in America I've got all the luck I need Shit's gonna work out for me Cause I'm a straight white male in America I've got all the luck I need 